I think of light beer, I think of Coors, Miller Light, Bud. I don't like them. Is this the craft light beer that might change my mind? We all love beer suds, but beer soap suds, would you? I don't think so. But I'll enjoy this. We're at the Conchahokan Brewing Company in King of Prussia. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now for What's Brewing. is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. We are open. Travel responsibly. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. By the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus beers. And by Concha Hawking Brewing Company, now shipping beer to all of Pennsylvania at ConchiExpress.com. Welcome to What's Brewing, along with my pal Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mackner with Conchahokan Brewing Company in King of Prussia. Beautiful early spring day, kind of sitting under the open uh, doors. I am enjoying an MC5, my favorite of the Conchahokan Brewing Company beers. I know, it's a, you're a big fan of the IPAs. I like this British style, oh, yeah. extra special bitter, Puddler's Row, World Beer Cup winner, one of my favorites too. Okay, so these styles we like. And let's be honest, we're both craft beer geeks which means that we both eschew the light beer, generally. We, that's true. You will, you know, I know a lot of brewers tend to, they, you know, they drink, they make all these big beers, but they want to drink something all the time that they can drink light. Yep. And that's where you see some lighter bodied beers. But now I'm starting to see new styles beers that are coming in definitely aimed at that light beer market. And this is one of them from Twisted Gingers in sort of that area in the row houses between Roxborough and Maniunk. Okay. This is Mayor Light. Uh, and this beer, I love this, uh, this back story on this. This is a very small brew pub, uh, uh, a neighborhood spot. And this beer was made by the brewer. He made this beer for his father to get him to drink something better than Bud is Light. Is that right? <laughs> so, oh, what a great story. It is. <laughs> and it's sought to make a beer his dad would like. Exactly. So this All is right. This is a light-bodied beer. I've had. I had this. You see my curled eyebrow, yeah. my, my skepticism at a light beer. I guess it's, it maybe it's a foolish prejudice, but I grew out of this stuff a lot of years ago. We'll we'll see. Smells like a light beer. It's okay. Just okay. I had this. I, beer. I don't dislike it. It's you know. It's, it's a little okay. bit heavier than a typical light beer. It's around 5.1 percent alcohol. Mm -hmm. But I found this is a great go-to beer. This was my lawnmower beer last year. I get it. I get it. So I bought one. This is the Big Kenny from Kenwood Brewing Company. Like the name, like it. Let's see what we think of this. Brand new brewery in the, in yeah. the area. Yeah. And I, and I really do wish them luck, as you can see. That's a lot lighter. Look that's at that. a light body looking beer. Yeah, okay. let's, let's compare that to the, the Mayor Light. So you can see, this one's clear. This, is, this looks like, to me, a Coors Light. It actually has a nice aroma. It's a lot uh, breadier than I you would expect. You know what, it's got flavor to it. I, I actually, I, I like this one. Um, this is, I'm this, working, I'm doing something, I just want something to drink. I can't allow myself to be, you know, too impacted, low alcohol. I agree. This totally reminds me of a light beer that actually has flavor. Yeah. The whole light beer phenomenon is so interesting to me because the history of it is somebody started doing it back in the 60s, selling it as diet beer. Right. Nobody wanted diet beer. Exactly. The it, first light beer came out in 1967, Gablinger's diet beer yeah. made by Rheingold. Yeah, so shockingly that didn't last. But 
Miller was the genius because they didn't call it diet beer, they called it light beer, and right. they got all those old jocks, Joe Frazier, Bob right. Uecker, all those guys to make it manly. Exactly, that's what it was. It's about manliness. You can drink, you can be a guy and drink a beer that still has, well, as they said, less filling, which really meant low in calories. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tastes great, less filling. It was one of the great ad campaigns ever. My problem with light beer has always been is that it's basically watered down beer. It, it is beer, they make a beer and then you just add water and they, they do other things with enzymes to chew up some of the sugars into it. But it's basically watered down beer. And in my mind, it's basically beer flavored liquid and it's not real beer. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and it reminds me like, Veterans Stadium 1985 beer here and right. like that's what it would taste like. Yeah. But I gotta tell you the Kenwood one I'm, I'm a little bit impressed with that. That's fine. You mentioned one. I like this one the Broken Goblet tried. Uh, yeah Broken Goblet. A number of other uh, local breweries have done it but they did one called Bub is Wiser at Broken Goblet and it sold out immediately and they're talking about uh, bringing back as another, as an, uh, again this year, there's been a couple others locally. 2SP makes Pony Boy Golden Light Lager, a 4%er. Uh, let's see, uh, Village Idiot, one of my favorite named yeah. light beers, Idiot Light. <laughs> I thought okay. it was great. Okay, that's fine. That's good. I think I'm generally going to stick with this. By the way, Big holiday coming up, National Pretzel Day. Yeah, it's later in April. I forgot to write the date. But, uh, uh, it's the last week of April, yep. and this is uh, our friends at Unique Snacks make these sourdough craft beer pretzels. And here's what I like about them, okay? So it comes as a ring, and the whole point is you take it, and when you go to the bar, if you got a bottle, it doesn't work so well with cans, but it's like, which one's my bottle? Oh, it's uh, that that's one. That's a great idea. There you go. Craft beer pretzel rings. I like that idea. There from, you go. Uh, sa uh, unique snacks. Got to love it. Yeah, I think I'm not going to chew on it. I'm not going to bite it right now Far because I got to. Yeah, there you go. I got to <laughs> talk. When we come back, good idea, bad idea, including a candle that smells like a dive bar. I think I know which way I'm going on that. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now, Conchock and Brewing Company and King of Prussia for What's Brewing. Hey Zoom World, I'm Marissa Magnata. And I'm Chill Moody. Look, breweries need our support now more than ever. Many breweries offer delivery and takeout services. And beer makes a great gift. Go to visitphilly.com for more information. It's time for spring seasonal beers and the easy drinking favorites at Conshohocken Brewing Company. There's something for everyone, whether it's the Blood Money Blood Orange IPA, the crushable Ring the Bell Unfiltered Pilsner, Life Coach Session IPA, or my favorite, MC5, a hazy hop bomb bursting with juicy flavor and aroma. Look for these and more at your favorite local beer retailer or visit any Conshohocken Brewing Company location where you'll find safe, comfortable indoor and outdoor seating. I'll see you there. Welcome back to What's Brewing. He's Joe Sixpack. By the way, find him on Twitter at beer underscore radar. I'm Glenn Macnow at Real Glenn Macnow. The show is at What's Brewing PA, and we are at Conchahawk and Brewing Company in King of Prussia. Beautiful facility. I got my Blood Money IPA in front of me, my friend. Well, I've got a lot of beer in front of me, but I'm sticking with this ESB because you know it's my favorite. I do. So we like to do a feature called Good Idea, Bad Idea. Here's the first one. It's a candle that smells like a dive bar, which I think is amazingly clever, which <laughs> makes it more surprising that it was done by the people at Miller Lite. They have marketed three candles that you put in your house uh, called Bar Smells Candle Line. Here's the three candles. The dive bar candle uh, scent features blended top notes of aromatic tobacco mixed with yeasty brew and finishes with hints of musk and pine. <laughs> Okay. All right. Hold on. The two more game day bar uh, combines the aromas of peanuts and jalapeno combined with the comforting smell of worn cracked leather. Oh, I thought you were going to say jock straps. But <laughs> 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 and finally, the beer garden candle transports you to the warm summer afternoon with sense of green moss and sunscreen that mixed with warm pretzels and the old cracked wood picnic table. Good idea, Ben. Ah, uh, come on, Glenn. A dive bar, aromatic candle. I love it. I love it. Good I think idea. Nothing smells more like romance than a candlelit dinner 
with aromatic hints of stale beer yeah. and cigar and smoke. Tobacco, yeah, tobacco. <laughs> all right, all right, bad idea. All right, next one, you got the beer soap? Yeah, beer soap. Uh, this is uh, big ass beer soap from Duke Cannons, uh, which is sort of like a manly man's uh, oh, label. Even the name, Duke Cannon. So this one here, this is uh, made with supposedly with Old Milwaukee American Lager. I had to read the label here, Glenn, because this blew me away. In Duke Cannon's day, a man didn't put strawberries or pumpkin spices in his beer. You never had to sniff your beer, and you didn't have to worry about pair pairing your beer with anything other than a damn hot dog. A tasting flight consisted simply of a six pack of quality American lager. They go on to bash, you yeah, know, basically yeah, craft they're going beer. for something there with the old Milwaukee. Exactly, except that this one here is another one from the same company, and it is uh, big ass beer soap made with fresh squeezed IPA from Deschutes. Oh, well, they're going to the doo doo. So yeah. here's the thing um, I guess, as much as I don't drink old Milwaukee, I try not to rub it on my armpits either. So I'm going bad idea. Well, yeah. Have you, has this, have you lathered up with this stuff? I have. You got it. I have. And, uh, you know, smell that. Sandalwood, I think, is, a, is the aroma It has nothing there. to do with beer. No, it doesn't smell it like it smells like all. cheap soap. I, I'd rather get bathed with a dive bar candle, Okay, I think. bad idea. <laughs> uh, finally, deer-flavored liquor. <laughs> well, we found some odd ones today. Would you drink a whiskey that was supposed to taste like venison? Uh, the makers of Eau de Musk already, uh, which is a, they make beaver castorium whiskey. Castorium is? It's something to do with butt. It's the anal secretion yes. of beavers, yes, <laughs> that they use to mark their territory. They've got a new release called Deer Slayer Whiskey. This is not made up, by the way, that's supposed to taste like deer because there's actual deer in the um, liquor. Um, I was unable to get a bottle, but they do sell it in Pennsylvania. I, I looked it up. How much does a bottle of that cost, Glenn? Uh, it is $60 for a bottle. 60 bucks? That's a lot of dough. <laughs> you know, it was a bad idea. <laughs> Me presenting that to you even is something to talk about. When we come back, we're going to give you the latest on our craft beer brackets. It's getting down to the nitty gritty. We're at the Conchahawk and Brewing Company in King of Prussia. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now for What's Brewing. Well, you hit every bad pun there, didn't you? I try. <laughs> it's a place that inspires the dreamers, the overachievers, a place for those who follow the path, as well as the ones who blaze them. So whether you want to go with the flow or rise above it all, visit Bucks County and be inspired. That's What's Brewing Beer Brewdown is sponsored by the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus beers. Vote for your choices on Twitter at beer underscore radar, real Glenn Mac now, or What's Brewing PA. Welcome back to What's Brewing with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mac now. We're at the Conchhock and Brewing Company in King of Prussia, one of the fine, fine breweries, Montgo Makers. Great breweries all around Montgomery County. Absolutely. Uh, we're at one of them, and we've been to several others during the season, so it's just a, a fun opportunity to discover what's new out there. Been a good tour. Check it all out with Monco Makers. Uh, okay, so we are doing our uh, beer brew down of the 32 most popular craft beers by sales, which not everybody agrees are all craft <laughs> beers, but I think these ones people are, are going to like this. Yeah. Week. We had a couple of good matches. Absolutely. Well, uh, this is the, the winners here are going into the final four, so we're really coming down to it. In the not so independent uh, bracket, which is breweries that are owned by other people or, or global entities. Not global, but they are conglomerates. Okay. We had uh, Cigar City High Lie, which uh, down in Florida, up against Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA. And I thought this was going to be a very close race because High Lai has a lot of big fans Good out beer. there, yeah. but like the 60 minute crushed it at 62% to 38%. Kind of for the local guys. Local guys, I think so. It's a go-to IPA, very mm -hmm. good beer. Uh, the other one, which was probably, I think was absolutely the closest 
uh, race that we had from the entire bracket was lagging this IPA just nudging out at 50.5 percent, wow. beating Founders All Day IPA 49 and a half percent. So it was it was pretty amazing that that That's race. It's a good one, and we've had fun doing it. Look at look for us on social media. You'll see we post these. Uh, a couple of them a week. All right, our pal Ava Graham is on the road again. Ava went to Five Saints Distillery in Norristown where she had a great time. Let's check it out. Hey, Glenn and Joe. Right now I am in beautiful downtown Norristown and hanging out at Five Saints Distilling. And it is incredible in here, the history of this building. And I'm standing with owner, Distiller. What else did I miss in this? Founder. And founder, John George. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Well, thank you so much for having us. Good the history in this building is astounding. Can you please give me a little bit more information about it? Absolutely. So it, you are standing in the old Humane Fire Engine Company, number one, built in the late 1880s. And we picked it up in 2014 and worked on it for two years before we could actually open it up as a distillery. And what you're standing in right now is the cocktail bar, the uh, first floor where we do musical events, some karaoke, different things. We don't own any of the memorabilia that you see here. It's really been entrusted to us in perpetuity uh, by the Humane Fire Engine Company number one. They wanted to keep it here. This is their home. It still is their home. We're renovating their home and we're basically telling the story of the Humane Fire Engine Company. And we do that by displaying the memorabilia and you see a lot here. And it is a rich history. I mean, firehouses were the center of communities. Um, you can think of firehouses as basically organizations that, social organizations that got together. And by the way, they also put out fires. Yes, <laughs> so. I read a little bit about this and everybody else can too on your website, which is awesome. But please give us a little bit of detail about why it's Five Saints Distilling. So when I was ready to retire from pharmaceuticals, uh, I decided that I really wanted to open a distillery. Well, I was thinking about it. So I went down to Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, and I can see she's smiling. Oh, yeah. Really? Are you serious? Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, and took their course. So I called my wife. I said, you know, I'm going to open a distillery. I'd like to. And she goes, we can talk about that when you get home. I'm from upstate New York. My father had died accidentally, and I was literally raised. He was 36. I was 11. I was literally raised by my three uncles, his three brothers, and a close family friend. So I like to say that I had five fathers, not just one. But, and I, I have a name, she goes, what's the name? I said, Five Fathers Distill, and she goes, oh my God, it's a great name, fantastic name. Let me Google it, she Googles it, she comes back, she says, sweet, I hate to tell you this, but you gotta change that name. Reason being that Jim Beam had just come out with a Five Fathers Limited Edition bourbon. I'm thinking, he had Five Fathers too, what gives here, right? <laughs> so I had to rethink about it, and let me just put it this way, I was a PIA, so I said, they were saints for putting up with me. You know, we're also part of the renovation of, or revitalization of Norristown. We want to help us get there. There's a lot of great people in Norristown. The municipality's been very, very supportive. Um, the county, Montgomery County's been fantastic. And we're doing okay, and we're looking forward to the future and being a part of the revitalized Norristown. Well, that's awesome, really, John. And as you can t tell, award-winning. But before we do that, Talk about I, I, wanted to, I want a little, little bit more about these products here. So we've got six different spirits. We came out with them in a chronological order, starting with the vodka and, and ending up with the, the rum. They've all won awards. You can find those in the PLCB. We also sell online at fivesaintsdistilling.com. You can pick them up here at the distillery. And you also find us at a numerous farmer's markets Tuesday through Sunday around the area. So we also have developed a line of cocktails to go, which the PLCB has allowed during COVID. And I hope that they'll, I think, believe and hope that they will continue to allow us to offer these. So we've come up with six different innovative cocktails to go, meaning they're ready to drink and they're sealed in bottles. We use our own products, the products that you have here. And these are cocktails that are, you could make them with recipes that are online at fivesaintsdistilling.com or you can come here and get them. Those have been very popular. We'll keep them, um, even after we open, so for, for people's convenience. We found them, they really like it. Well, now speaking of opening, yep. uh, what, what's a projection? What, what, what's your future plans? Yeah. Lay it on me. So um, we are evolving. We're finishing the renovations of the second and third floor. 
and we believe people are really going to enjoy it. They come in here and they say, what a great vibe. I think they're going to get the same great vibe on the second and third floor. We are adding a food component. So as the name implies, Five Saints Distilling and Firehouse Kitchen number one, it won't be fine dining. It will be fun dining, a place to come and relax and enjoy. So that's number one. We are looking at a number, another location down in Philadelphia for number two. And I've mentioned to my wife that number 47 Five Saints is Learning and Fire's Kitchen number 47 goes into Chicago, so stay tuned. Oh, that's awesome. John, it, it's been a pleasure. It is. Thank with you. you. It's today. been a pleasure talking and to you too. I hope to make it back here again because it's an incredible experience, and I think that you, Glenn and Joe, should make your way out here too. Back to you guys. Wow, that looked great. Ava, nice work by you. We sent her on some fun assignments. Are we paying her for that stuff? <laughs> Maybe not. Painter and liquor. <laughs> anyway, hey, coming back, we're going to talk to Andrew Colligan. Let's face it, he's the brains behind this whole operation. We're at the Conshohocken Brewing Company in King of Prussia. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now for What's Brewing. They're not just familiar faces. They're your friends and neighbors. It's their small businesses, a beating heart that makes a neighborhood a home where personality is served on a plate and imagination paints a brighter world. A place where fresh is always in stock with a personal touch passed down through generations. Support small and make a big difference. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Monco. The Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, over 90 breweries, and over a thousand beers. Sip your way through it, one beer at a time. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing, along with Joe Sixbeck on Glenn Mack. We're joined by Andrew Colgan, um, sales manager for Conchak and Brewing Company. We're here in the King of Prussia production facility, and you're going to show us some of the spring beers. Absolutely. Yeah, we're really excited to bring out some new beers and get back to uh, being open and drinking some beers. Now we got some warm weather finally. So uh, first one we're going to start with today is our Ring the Bell, our unfiltered Pilsner. Unfiltered Pilsner. Indeed. So that means it's going to be a little bit cloudy, maybe? Just, just a bit, yeah. Okay. Classically, it's a German-style Keller Pils or Cellar Pilsner. Uh, we really want something crisp, clean, light, refreshing, and easy drinking. Uh, we added uh, some American hops. We added some Chinook hops in this guy. So just a, a little bit more hop character than your average European lager. But hey, if you're sitting, uh, you know, watching a game or out on the golf course, well, this is one to have a couple. And speaking of, of uh, watching the game, this is for sale at the Phillies games. You go to Citizens Bank Park. You can right. uh, enjoy one of these as you watch the Phillies uh, bullpen hold the lead. Yeah. I'm optimistic. Let's like, see if it happens. I like this beer because it is that clean and crisp uh, taste to it, but it is also got a nice body as well because it's unfiltered and it tastes, you know, we were talking about light beers earlier. This tastes like a beer that's light, but it has actual flavor to it. Absolutely. A beer drinker's pilsner, you know, yes, especially coming from a great local. All right, beer. what's next? All right, next we have uh, one of my personal favorites, especially now as we're getting back into some warm weather. Uh, this is Life Coach. It's our hazy, unfiltered, 100% citra hop session IPA. So this is one that clocks in a little bit under 5% alcohol. Um, it's obviously hazy, which I know you're going to love, one yeah, of your you favorites. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, any beer I can't see through, I know I'm going to like. Yeah, yeah, and this one is one of the haziest from us. So we use all citra hops, so you get big, intense citrus and grapefruit Oh, notes. you really do. You get the grapefruit in the nose right there. Yeah, all from those wow. citra hops. Mm -hmm. so. That's big and huge. I poured that one into your special glass there. Tell me Indeed. about that. Yeah, so I, I brought my uh, Bar League of Homebrewers pint glass with me today. <laughs> it's uh, hey, kind of a fun play on words there, but we're the largest homebrew club in South Jersey. I live in Philadelphia now, but I'm a Cherry Hill Jersey guy at heart. So. Um, we love making beer, and finally this year I think we're going to have our big brew day back. And That's great. Barley yeah. Legal is really one of the best beer clubs in America, in my, in my or homebrew clubs. They produce so many brewers and people like yourself who are in the beer industry. Absolutely. A, couple, a bunch of our guys have opened their own breweries, especially on the Jersey side. A couple of guys just go and uh, sell some delicious beer from Conchalk and Brewing. But yep. either way, it's a great, uh, great group of guys who make their own beer and, hey, try and bring it to the people. Life Coach is a good beer, too. I really enjoy it. Thank you. All right, next. Next, we have, uh, hopefully, everybody's familiar with uh, one of our best, especially this time of year. This is Blood Money. It's our Blood Orange IPA. Um, we wanted something just intensely citrusy, really refreshing. Um, this one was down at the ballpark a couple years ago. Yep. It's actually our second best selling beer all year round. Even really? Though, yeah. People ask me about it they all do. the time. They it's do. It's one that the, the Blood Orange really works in yep. there. 
I mean, it, it, the taste is great. The can is great. People yeah. love this beer. Yeah, designed by a local guy from uh, mm -hmm. Delaware County, actually, yeah. as well. So this is a, a light citrusy, just easy drinking IPA. Clocks in a little bit under 7%. And hey, if you, uh, if you need to have a couple of them at a time, why not have one, a uh, couple blood money? Is India Pale Ale, is that generally, the, is that the number one seller for Conchi? Oh, for sure. Yeah, so if you look at Type A IPA, which is our hands down number one seller, uh, that one makes up just about half of our entire yearly sales. Wow. This one, Blood Money, even though it's only available for six months from March to October, clocks that number two in just those six months. So yeah, uh, yeah between those two, so almost three quarters of our yearly sales. Wow. Yeah. Well, IPA, that, you know, it sells, so. Works for me. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, <laughs> let's talk about um, this place where we are in King of Prussia. Mm -hmm. It is the main production facility for Conchhocken Brewing it Company. Is. But the tables are here, you get food here. What are the hours? When, when can people come out and enjoy themselves? Yeah, so we're open uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays from 4 to 8 p.m. and the Fridays and Saturdays from 12 to 8 and then Sundays from 12 to 6. So uh, we were lucky enough to open this just about two years ago. This is where we make all the beer now. So it was able to uh, just about quadruple our production capacity. We make it all here, but obviously we got a nice big bar and a whole bunch of tables and some beautiful outdoor seating for you to uh, be able to enjoy some beers and some great food here as well. So, all right, yeah. I think we have time for one more. Let's do it, why not? So uh, this guy is, again, one of those uh, nice spring and summer times beer. Finally have some nice weather. This is our uh, prettiest beer that we make in Concha <laughs> Brewery, if I can, you know? <laughs> yep. This is Philly Weiss. Um, so it's a blueberry Berliner Weiss, so classic German style sour. Uh, we kettle sour it, and then we add 10 pounds of blueberries what per barrel. What does that mean, you kettle sour it? What does that mean? So this one we actually add lactic acid directly to the brew kettle to give you that really nice tart sour nose, and we can control how much sour we want. So this isn't over the top, it just doesn't hurt on the way down. This is one you can sit back, enjoy a couple of, uh, it's refreshing. And then obviously that beautiful pink purple color from uh, just about 600 pounds of blueberries in each batch. But it's not overwhelming on the blueberries. It's not a big sweet drink. It has that kind of sour tang to yeah. it that a Berliner Weiss should have. Oh, absolutely. You know, on the golf course, this is one we had at, again, Philly Stadium a couple years ago at Citizens Bank Park, a nice one to have on a hot day. And this time, for the first time ever this year, we're actually going to have a series of Philly Weiss. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not just going to be blueberry. We're actually going to have a kiwi strawberry. We're playing around with having a watermelon, maybe a key lime, and possibly an apple spice cider donut version in the fall. So we're gonna have some fun with this beer this year. Yeah. Oh, well, apple spice donut. Well, it'll also be included in our variety packs, which is the big thing we have coming in just about a couple weeks or a month or so. Uh, we're introducing the first ever Conchhock and Brewery Variety 12 pack, six different beers, two cans of each, and it's gonna be 16 ounce cans. So <laughs> easy way for you to take home even more Conchhock and Brewery There you beer. go. The variety yeah. is great and the beer is terrific. Oh, and yeah. we've loved spending the day here. Andrew Colligan, mm. best to you. By the way, how's that baby doing? Ah, Mason's doing great. Mason K. Colgan, she's six months old, and uh, hey, I need, a, I need some extra beers now. <laughs> End of the day. Anyway, we've had a great time here yeah. in King of Prussia from the Conchock and Brewing Company. We look forward to seeing you next week with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now, thanks for watching What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. We are open. Travel responsibly. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. By the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus beers. And by Concha Hocking Brewing Company. Now shipping beer to all of Pennsylvania at conchiexpress.com.